Okay. Mm. Is this better? Okay. Uh, I hope you read the question. So, tell me what you think. Um, so they are asking you about innate immune system and the difference between innate and adaptive immune system um, and what do you think what could be the answer and why because we discussed this um, like some materials <laughs> take your time and tell me what you think Sorry? C? E. Uh, why do you think this is E? Okay. Um, good choice. Uh, any other ideas? C. Uh, exhibit memory. So uh, every time you see memory, this should be an adaptive immune system, like T cells, B cells. So uh, that's not true for innate immune system. So uh, okay, let's discuss the answer. So the answer here is E, and you're right because. Um, innate immune system uh, works against everything uh, as a like uh, initially they, they are exposed to imaging something bacteria like innate immune system cells are macrophages or neutrophils and they are as effective uh, the first time it is exposed as in a, like subsequent or recurrent exposures because it can have memory and also uh, it's not very specific because it has low specificity. It acts in the same manner against every type of invasive organisms, bacteria, fun fungus, viruses, and anything. And mm, regarding other answers, the highly specific in its response to individual bacterial species is adaptive immune system. Like we have T cells, B cells, they have also memory but other than this they are very specific to specific bacteria and uh, you should always think mm, about adaptive system and adap about immunoglobulins which are secreted by B cells so you know immunoglobulins are antibodies that can target and kill directly bacteria or uh, bacterial toxins so that's why they are very specific they should not have low specificity because they can damage other cells okay so that's why a highly specific is only uh, adaptive immune system and also uh, regarding B response to viruses and fungi not bacteria uh, innate immune system can respond to everything so that's I isn't th true also uh, adaptive immune system has memory uh, and um, not innate immune system and also uh, in is part of our host defense against bacteria but not against fungi also this is not true because innate immune system can attack any type of um, invasive bacteria fungi viruses so that's why is the correct answer do you have an if you have any questions like when while we are discussing please raise your hand Okay, let's move on to another question.
Any ideas? Which one? So they are asking uh, um, we need to identify some molecules, glycoproteins, which is expressed of on all thymocytes. CD3. Uh, uh, other choices? What do you think? Like, let's. Uh, four. Okay. So, the thing is, um, neither CD3 and nor CD4 is the correct answer because they are asking us uh, the lymphocytes, we, we have three types T cells, uh, like helper T cells, cytotoxic, and natural killer cells are also part of lymphocytes. Uh, and the marker like CD3 uh, is for T helper and cytotoxic T cells but NK cells do not express CD3 so that's not correct answer and CD4 CD4 we discussed yesterday that CD4 is only expressed on T helper cells okay T helper cells that's why they are helping other cells so we will see uh, this how they are helping in other modules but for now CD4 is for T helpers and we also discussed yesterday cytotoxic T cells which have CD8 on its surface okay uh, so now here all uh, thymocytes um, express CD2 because uh, in early development uh, during the maturation um, they all express CD2 and you, you can see here um, <coughs> because they are a thymic origin and uh, initially they start maturation in the bone marrow and next they go into the thymus and continue and finish their maturation so uh, that's why CD2 is uh, their marker and also um, we discussed CD4 for T helper cells CD8 for cytotoxic T cells uh, and also CD3 is not marker for NK cells because uh, we will see later today that C NK cells express only uh, CD16 and CD56 and these are their identification marker and also um, you need to remember like beginning from CD19 like CD19, 20, 21, 22, 23 all these are markers of B cells okay only B cells have this uh, CD19, 20 and uh, 21, 22 um, and also why not TCR um, yeah, there was like F TCR receptor so um, T natural killer cells do not express T cell receptor because natural killer cell is not T cell okay so that's why it's not correct answer any questions okay so uh, anyway you need to somehow remember those identification markers because they are important when we are talking about the specific T cells, B cells, NK cells so uh, try to understand and remember those markers We discussed two minutes ago that, that uh, B cells and T cells have 
specificity and memory because they are the only cells which are in adaptive immune system so only adaptive immune system has specificity and the memory both so uh, B cells and T cells would be true here and not neutrophils because neutrophils are part of innate immune system okay and it can't have specificity it can act against everything okay and without specificity uh, and also same can be true for macrophage dendritic cells and NK cells NK cell may, may be uh, its origin like it has lymphoid origin it's lymphocyte but it is part of innate immune system okay it's not part of adaptive immune system it is lymphocyte but uh, in innate immune system and uh, we will see this so uh, other like B, C, D, E and R part of innate immune system they don't have specificity and also uh, they don't have memory so only mm, B cells and T cells have memory and specificity let's try another one Any ideas? Uh, so you need to somehow eliminate incorrect answers so you will get the right one. So how do you think eosinophil and natural killer cells are both innate cells of the myeloid lineage? No, because myeloid are uh, is only eosinophil and lymphoid origin is NK cell so uh, you need to eliminate incorrect answer A uh, so um, C C uh, we have just eliminated C because eosinophil is only myeloid lineage the cell and NK cell I told you this is from uh, lymphoid origin NK cell is lymphocyte actually other than B and T cell lymphocytes um, okay so here the correct answer would be D uh, because <coughs> the A answer so let's uh, eliminate others uh, if there's a loss of epithelial barrier uh, this can predispose not only to fungal infections but also bacterial and viral infections because we know epithelial and is a physical barrier so uh, it can discriminate between fungi or bacteria or virals so that's why uh, loss of this barrier can predispose to anything so this is not correct answer uh, and the B uh, the main function of mast cells and eosinophils is not to engulf microbes and debris this is a function of uh, macrophage okay eosinophils and mast cells mostly are involved in allergic reactions they degranulate and also eosinophils and uh, mast cells are involved in helminth uh, elimination of helminths and worms so that's why this is not their mm, primary action and effector function and C we just said Eosinophil is from myeloid lineage and NK is uh, lymphocyte, so lymphoid origin. And D, so um, we discussed yesterday that there we have several types of antigen presenting cells which primary encounter the invaders like uh, bacteria. Okay, dendritic cell like B cell, macrophage are part of. APC or antigen presenting cells so uh, they are primary cells which initiate immune response first they are activated and next only after their activation they activate other cells like adaptive immune system cells 
B cells and T cells. Uh, so uh, that's why P is the correct answer here. Okay, let's move on to another one. Any idea? All the answers are true except one, so you can easily guess. Yeah, please speak up, tell me what you think. E? Okay, presentate. Uh, okay. Uh, I have just said that phagocyte like macrophage is antigen presenting cell and also dendritic cell and B cell so uh, they can present antigen peptides to MHC so this is true for phagocytes like macrophage B B uh, production of free oxidate uh, they can produce uh, free o oxidative radicals like uh, hydrogen peroxide or other oxygen radicals uh, by which they uh, actually destroy the bacteria so uh, this is true for um, macrophage and phagocytes which one? P <laughs> uh, actually this is also true because they can express uh, because we will see in other lectures that macrophage and phagocytes can release many different types of cytokines they can cause fever like interleukin 1, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 6 so they can release many many different types of pro-inflammatory cytokines and also chemokines which are important for the movement of neutrophils so this is also true any other ideas? A? Okay. <laughs> no, first he said A, so this is also true for phagocytes because uh, the word itself says phagocyte. Phagocyte means it eats something, engulfs something, and kills. So this is the function of phagocyte. Uh, so the um, incorrect answer would be here and correct for uh, is the primary function of phagocyte is not to produce perforin and granzymes. Uh, the there are only two cells which use perforins and granzymes. CD8 lymphocytes or cytotoxic T cells, CD8 positive and also NK cells or natural killer cells. There are only two cells and once they release, uh, they are in their granules, this perforin and granzyme, uh, and they can activate apoptosis pathway, and apoptosis means they can induce cell death, okay? So this is not true for phagocytes. Okay, another one.
Any idea? C. Um, antigen. Um, actually, they can express both MHC1 and MHC2. So you can say you can say that they do not express MHC1 because they uh, now. Um, okay, MHC1 is expressed on all nucleated cells okay so any s our cell can express MHC1 but MHC2 is only expressed on antigen presenting cells which we have a few of them macrophage dendritic cells uh, B cells okay so um, any cell which has nucleus can express MHC1 so this is not true any other cases? A. Uh, so actually, this is true uh, because uh, yesterday we talked that monocytes, once they come from bone marrow, they circulate in the blood, and therefore, once they cross the blood barrier and go into tissues, they are called macrophages. Okay they are the same but the difference between where they are and also they can differentiate into macrophage and also dendritic cells so uh, that's why this is uh, true for these antigen presenting cells uh, okay B D uh, D okay so cytosolic antigens are not degraded by proteasome because external uh, cytosol means s intracellular antigen okay but intracellular antigens are presented on MHC1 so and extracellular antigens like bacterial antigens are uh, degraded by proteasomes and uh, actually uh, are degraded by not proteasomes degraded by macrophage phagolysosome fusion and um, once macrophage degrades a microbe, it can um, derive proteins, and therefore only after protein, when we have protein, it can be displayed on MHC2. So exogenous is for MHC2, and cytosolic or intracellular antigens like viruses uh, are presented on MHC1. We we will see this um, for future lectures. So. Don't stress if you don't understand anything or something. Uh, actually, c CCR7 is chemokine uh, and dendritic cells had nothing to do with this because um, this is for movement of neutrophils. Uh, the chemokine, which is involved in neutrophil migration, and uh, that's not true for dendritic cells. the revision we have five types of immunoglobulins like IgA, uh, immunoglobulin D, immunoglobulin E, G, and M. So w what do you think? G. Okay, good choice. Uh, so this is uh, very important to understand because uh, Neonates uh, can't produce immunoglobulins initially, and as you know, they need protection from external bacteria or microbes. So there should be some way that our like women's um, women can transmit immunoglobulin G, and therefore uh, during the first few months. Uh, Babies have the immunoglo high immunoglobulin G levels from their mother, so therefore they can have immunity to protect uh, their uh, organism from other like invaders, macrophages, or 
uh, sorry, in microbes or viruses or fungi. So this is very important, and I you can see here. Mm. Okay, so this is called passive immunity because uh, passive means there's a can be induced by two ways: I either transfusion of immunoglobulins into our organism, or uh, another way is to passively um, transport immunoglobulin G through the placenta during the pregnancy. Okay, mm. and only after and like uh, it, those immunoglobulin G can last several months, like three or six. And once they wanes, uh, at the time the neonate or this infant is capable of producing uh, himself or herself these immunoglobulins. But initially, a neonate can't produce. So that's why this is important. The T cells and N cells can work in the same way, but we talked about this. They release some granules, some chemicals. Uh, so here the answer should be: we have discussed perforin and granzyme. These are in those granules, and those enzymes or um, proteins can induce apoptosis of target cells. Mostly, um, we know that NK cells or uh, c mm, CD8 cytotoxic T cells are capable of destroying tumor cells and viral cells. So these two are important for CD8 and uh, NK cells. And once they release, th there can be many ways in of inducing apoptosis. But uh, for T cells uh, and NK cells, they can produce those proteins. Uh, perforin actually perforates and creates pores and holes into the uh, target cells. It can be viral cell or tumor cell. And after there's a uh, hole formation, granzyme gets into those cells and this granzyme B induces apoptosis, okay? And this will lead to death of the, uh, this target cell. Okay, another one. So I can give you a clue. This patient uh, had splenectomy because of abdominal trauma. And they are asking you why actually the spleen is necessary and what what is the function of the spleen and why do we need actually. And also there is a correlation what happens if the patient does not have spleen due to some reason. Any ideas? B or D? Mm. Maybe. 
other ideas mm. okay so actually D is the correct answer because um, you know uh, there's a high blood flow into the spleen and there are always um, some types of bacteria once they invite into our organism they circulate in the blood and spleen is important for their elimination and clearance uh, because we have white pulp and red pulp and in the red pulp of the spleen there is a movement of these bacteria and uh, and also erythrocytes are there so we have macrophages in the spleen which uh, are important for the um, clearance of those bacteria and uh, sometimes uh, when we have prob problem with the spleen or patient does not have spleen this means asplenia uh, during this uh, it can predispose some infections like capsular uh, the bacteria which have capsule are mostly involved in this process because capsular bacteria like uh, meningococci or streptococcus pneumoniae and also hemophilus influenzae have some capsule and therefore they are mostly cleaned by the spleen macrophages uh, because uh, we will see later that uh, we have immunoglobulins in the blood and also some complement opsonizers so uh, they can target and opsonize those bacteria in the blood and once they go to the spleen macrophage can detect these uh, bacteria and can directly kill engulf them and um, avoid uh, spreading of the infection um, so this is important and when patients um, undergo splenectomy uh, we talked about this yesterday that they must be vaccinated against those capsular uh, microorganisms like hemoph uh, these three are the most important hemophilus influenza b uh, which can cause meningitis otitis and other infections also meningococci which can lead to severe um, meningitis and also dissemination can lead to shock and adrenal failure known as waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome um, and also strep pneumonia can also cause pneumonia and meningitis so we need to understand uh, the uh, process what's going on in the spleen and why we need because uh, spleen uh, as you can see here can produce almost the half of body's total immunoglobulins and immunoglobulins like G uh, most and M are capable of targeting those bacteria like coating them called opsonizers uh, these immunoglobulins are opsonizing and coating those bacteria in the blood and once they go to the spleen they are detected by splenic macrophage and destroyed okay so that's why we need the spleen mm. okay briefly discussed this yesterday and one of our colleagues suggested like explanation he was sitting there and uh, that's why I brought this question this can be tough uh, question but 
this is good for clinical understanding okay because uh, in this semester we are going to cover like uh, not very interesting things so that's why I'm bringing you some clinical correlations because it's much more interesting yeah so let's try this so you need to know what is Fox P3 this is a specific marker of some T cells okay and if you know this specific T cell subtypes now you understand the function of them and also you understand what may happen if there's a dysregulation of those uh, Fox P3 positive T cells any ideas? B? Uh, okay good one uh, so uh, actually the answer is B because regulatory T cells have uh, on their surface also CD4 as an identification marker CD25 and FOXP3 uh, and regulatory cell function is to downregulate immune system and if there's a problem with those regulatory T cells it can function properly and therefore normally uh, they can't inhibit T and B cells so therefore there will be over and excessive activation and unregulated activation of T and B cells and they can attack our normal uh, cells like anywhere and they can cause autoimmune disorder um, which is X-linked um, and can induce some endocrinopathies also enteropathies and type 1 diabetes which is also immunogenic disorder because uh, in type 1 diabetes we have some uh, antibodies and also T cells that directly uh, destroy pancreatic beta cells which produce insulin so therefore uh, also this disorder uh, can have this uh, manifestation and also uh, always well, when you see a question Y you need to understand what's going on there in terms of uh, what type of patient is this is this a boy or a girl and uh, you can suspect by this uh, uh, some disorders because X-linked disorders are almost always in boys you do you know why is this uh, we what expressive yeah uh, so uh, any other ideas okay so boys or men we have one X chromosome X and Y and woman you have two X chromosome so if there's a defect in one X chromosome in woman uh, another X chromosome can compensate and we only have one X chromosome so if there is a mutation in some X uh, chromosome genes we can't compensate and uh, that's why mostly X linked disorders are in boys but there can be some variations and manifestations in women okay so this was the idea and uh, Fox P3 and uh, actually T regulatory cells can produce many cytokines uh, I'm not going to discuss this uh, now but uh, you m can understand here that they can deactivate and inhibit the function of B cells and T cells so that's why they uh, uh, they are not going to attack our normal cells and they are regulated okay and also here for just a revision they have markers like CD3, 4, 25 and FOXP3 uh, and if there is a mutation and deficiency of FOXP3 T-Rex can't work properly therefore this can lead to auto-reactive T-cell and B-cell production and can lead to autoimmune disorders ok another one
me Shelly, even uh, if you don't understand what disorder the patient may have or something firstly I would suggest to read the question from the uh, question from the last line okay because there may be asking something that you can easily find in the answer but if you don't find uh, you can catch the password like this patient does not have timing shadow and we know that normally when baby is born uh, it has huge thymus okay and it can be cell shaped and uh, can easily be identified on x-ray but, but when there is no thymic shadow on x-ray so this means this patient does not have thymus development and now you understand the T cells uh, you know that are maturated in thymus okay T cell thymus so there should be some T cell problems and there may be absence of T cells so now you uh, should know there like T cell plays in lymph nodes so that is what they are asking uh, the examination of the patient's lymph nodes will most likely show poor development of which of the following structures there will be poor development of structures in which are T cell zone okay now now you know then do you remember uh, where in lymph nodes T cells reside specifically any ideas any ideas so where T cells are in lymph nodes Bec this is important because uh, in some disorders we have T cell problems uh, like deficiency and there is a poor development of this region and uh, we can easily diagnose through this so actually this patient has DeGeorge syndrome uh, which is a developmental disorder embryological disorder where uh, thymus is not formed properly and therefore T cell we have T cell dysfunction and decrease or absence of T cells and also other than thymus development this um, DeGeorge syndrome may have other heart problems other manifestations like congenital heart defects and uh, also uh, parathyroid gland problems but uh, what you need to know here the T cells are in paracortical region of the lymph nodes so this will be the uh, correct answer here uh, okay uh, because we have several uh, y you can read the answer and uh, I can show you the slide of how lymph node looks like and we can identify other regions too so and that's why this patient had some infections because if there are no T cells uh, matured in the thymus after they leave the bone marrow there can be predisposition to mostly viral infections but can be protozoas and also other bacterial pathogens mm, and we know that T cells reside mostly in uh, paracortex of the lymph node so uh, you can see here we have uh, paracortex uh, which is uh, near the cortex and also we have primary follicles where B cells are so B cells are in uh, primary follicle and germinal center and in the paracortical region of lymph node we have T cells and uh, sometimes for the clinical correlation other than this immune deficiency there can be viral infections like Epstein-Barr virus which can induce uh, severe lymphadenopathy and that's how it induces um, lymphadenopathy because it activates T cells in paracortical region it causes expansion of paracortical region in lymph nodes and that's why patient experience severe lymphadenopathy so uh, you need to understand this
where they are mm. and in the outer cortex we had B lymphocytes like uh, you can see here primary follicle and germinal center are in outer cortex okay um, and also we have medulla uh, we are I you can find medullary sinuses and also cords we are other immune cells are like macrophages, B cells and uh, all of them are involved in antigen presentation activation of adaptive immune system and and so on okay Which one? Yes. Uh, so we discussed this. And CD8 T cells are have similar killing ability like uh, natural killer cells. They can both produce perforins and granzymes, and they can kill virus infected cells and also neoplastic or tumor cells. So uh, this is important for them and CD4 T lymphocytes we know they are T helper cells they can help other cells to uh, exhibit and also increase uh, activation of other adaptive immune cells and therefore can promote the elimination of uh, microbes or viruses or other antigen containing cells and also dendritic cells are antigen presenting cells like macrophages and they are uh, involved in activation other cells mm. okay so um, these are just general overview Wh what are b cells and t cells let's move on to another question ideas uh, so sometimes people patients develop uh, neutropenia or decrease in white blood cells during the chemotherapy uh, so uh, and we have hopefully some medications uh, that can increase uh, this leukocyte production in the bone marrow so they are asking us uh, about the progenitor cells in the bone marrow and what they express. Uh, there are specific CD markers which are expressed on multipotent stem cell which can differentiate into any type of immune cell or also into erythrocytes and other cells, thrombocytes. Uh, and uh, here the correct answer would be B because CD34 is a marker of pluripotent or multipotent stem cell which can give rise to the development of other cells and uh, also we have some medications which uh, target granulocyte colony stimulating factor or GCSF uh, and therefore uh, activation of those GCSF can lead to production of more leukocytes and neutrophils and that's how we avoid some infections because when patients have neutropenia or decreased neutrophil count during the chemotherapy it can predispose the patient to severe infections okay so that's why we need to somehow increase neutrophil numbers and this is how mm. 
okay and here down you can see the marker of hematopoietic stem cell is CD34 for NCA cells we discussed this is CD56 and also it was uh, the uh, CD16 and also other CD3 and 4 okay another question okay uh, yeah that's right so we know that NK cells and also T cells or cytotoxic T cells can kill viral infected cells and also tumor cells and Epstein-Barr virus is also a virus so it can be uh, killed directly by NK cells and also you can see here the NK markers and uh, I want you haven't covered the virology yet, but I want you to know that Epstein-Barr virus and many other viruses have some specific receptor by which they go into our cells, okay? And Epstein-Barr virus actually uses CD21, and you know that CD21 is a marker of B cells, so Epstein-Barr virus can go into B cells through this receptor, it can induce some proliferation of B cells and also those B cells can activate those CD8 T cells and this is a mechanism how they are killed and sometimes when there is excessive proliferation of uh, Epstein-Barr virus in B cells it can promote the development of some um, lymphoid malignancies like Hodgkin's lymphoma or Burkitt's lymphoma that's because it can activate some uh, uh, genes in those li lymphocytes and therefore uh, this is uh, the very, I would say, nasty virus because it can induce many types of uh, lymphoid malignancies and because of this, it, um, that's why um, uh, it can go into B cells through the CD21 receptors. Okay another one Have you guessed the disorder? Um, C. Mm, less likely. So, this patient had the George syndrome. Uh, so this means it have T cell dysfunction. Those patients have T cell dysfunction, and now you need to identify. T cell markers which will be absent in the blood because there are no T cell maturation because there is no thymus okay T sure so T is the only marker for T cells or like CD8 or CD4 T cells also um, what are other markers like CD16, 19, 20? Yes, yeah, so E is a marker of NK cell and we know that NK cell is, uh, is not going a maturation process in time so this won't be decreased. Uh, CD19 and 20 is also a marker of B cells so therefore um, there is no B cell problem in the um, uh, Dijord syndrome. 
and uh, it can have many other manifestations but generally we know that it uh, has uh, this disorder has decreased T cells and therefore decreased CD3 and CD4 and uh, also uh, CD8 because in the thymus there is a maturation of CD4 and CD8 T cells so therefore they are also decreased yeah, okay and these are the manifestation of the George syndrome uh, and the embryologic problem of this disorder okay another one C. Why do you think that this C? Okay, good, good choice. Why not D? Okay, so the patient was given uh, GMCSF, also known as granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor and we know that granulocytes and monocytes are myeloid lineage so therefore the C is the correct answer because they can act on myeloid stem cells and therefore they can induce the differentiation of myeloid stem cells into the you know granulocytes which are neutrophils, eosinophils and also monocytes so that's why this medication is used for neutropenia in chemotherapy uh, patients. Okay, another one. one H uh, H actually is derivative of bilirubin so uh, it has nothing to do with bacteria and aspirated fluid color mostly uh, so they are asking you some neutrophil um, enzyme which can give this color to sputum or aspirated fluid so neutrophils have in granules some of one of the, those uh, enzymes and therefore these enzymes are important for also destruction of bacteria and also giving the fluid its uh, specific color like yellowish green fluid uh, uh, so n not ENF D is the correct answer because myeloperoxidase uh, is in the lysosomal granules in neutrophils so therefore uh, they are responsible for this gr mostly green color of the pus uh, in aspirated fluid uh, so therefore and also you need to know that myeloperoxidase not only gives the color also it uh, induces destruction of the bacteria and organisms those therefore the my you, you need to remember this myeloperoxidase Um, 
Okay. N now you know and remember. So of course the easy an correct answer because uh, enzymes are released from T cells and NK cells and therefore they can induce apoptosis. So um, okay now you can have break but only for five minutes because we have so many questions to discuss. Okay, but uh, have some time. Let's continue in five minutes.
let's continue because we have to cover some questions and um, I wanted to finish this presentation So they are asking you, the mononuclear phagocyte system does not include. Monocyte tells you it's mononuclear, <laughs> so that's not true. Um, see, no, they are also part of mono. D, oh E, sure, because endothelial cells are have nothing to do with mononuclear phagocytic system because they are just in endothelium and like in the blood vessel endothelium or somewhere so uh, all of the them all of these uh, other answers like monocytes are mononuclear phagocytic system also kupfer cells we know that are macrophages in the liver also kidney mesangial cells can have this phagocytic function and al also lymph node macrophage are the mononuclear uh, system cells so endothelial cells is not the correct is the correct answer here okay um, another one Wait. Yeah, be more confident. So of course C is the correct answer because it it had many like specific and other affinity granules but let's uh, see another answer so neutrophil is not bone marrow stem cell okay it has nothing to do with this also uh, it's not similar to mast cell because mast cell is a different entity and also they are professional phagocytic cells along with macrophages so uh, this is not true and also they have granules but uh, they do not stay with eosin because eosin stains them uh, with like red and they stain with basophilic more they are more basophilic and uh, they stain uh, blue uh, so uh, that's why the answer here is it contains several granules mostly you need to know uh, of course there are two types specific granules which contain alkaline phosphatase collagenase lysozyme and they are all involved in uh, inflammation and in the degradation of uh, microbes and elimination of the infection and also azurophilic granules you can see here uh, myeloperoxidase at least you know myeloperoxidase now because you know that they can destroy the microbes and also can uh, stain the sputum with yellow green color okay and also other granules are important in the inflammation and, and in all the processes what neutrophil can uh, exert
Any idea? Yeah, please. See, uh, actually, they contain peroxidase. Uh, so eosinophil, the name itself says it uh, is red because it is stained by eosin. So therefore, it uh, does not stain with basic dyes. So that that's not true. But others are true for um, eosinophil. Okay, they can contain major basic protein, contain peroxidase you also respiratory burst once they are activated and also they have complement C3B receptors and this C3B is involved in opsonization of microbes or helminths and therefore eosinophil can recognize those uh, C3B coated helminths okay because uh, and they stain with acid dyes and therefore they are more red compared to neutrophils and basophils which uh, are stained uh, with uh, basic dyes and they are blue okay idea y you can easily guess because uh, neutrophils and macrophage are part of which system Th they are also called what phagocytes so uh, they attack bacteria by phagocytosis they ingest engulf those bacteria and they kill them they can uh, secret complement and interferon that's not true for neutrophils and also they do not attack exclusively by oxygen dependent or independent mechanism so the answer here is phagocytosis because they are professional phagocytic cells along with uh, macrophages ideas um, so clonal selection uh, I can say you that clonal selection only um, uh, is involved in adaptive immune system so this means we have the selection of clones which are very antigen specific now you tell me which cells are involved in clonal selection. See, of course, because T cells and only T and B cells can have clonal selection. So once they are activated, we initially you know we have naive B and T cells, and they are activated by macrophage and, and other adaptive immune system cells, and once because of the antigen presentation okay we have some new antigen and once they are activated they can produce some specific clones of lymphocytes B and T cell depending on which is activated and also those lymphocytes are very highly antigen specific okay so therefore this is called clonal selection um, Okay, another one. See, 
um, actually plasma cells are derived from B cells so uh, that's not true E yeah you said E uh, uh, yeah G good one so why do you think this is E Antigen or antibody? Antibody. So you know that from molecular biochemistry and histology that uh, on rough endoplasmic reticulum there is a protein synthesis going on, and you know that immunoglobulins or antibodies are proteins. So therefore, they have very highly developed rough endoplasmic reticulum and uh, that's why uh, there's a very high amount of protein or immunoglobulin secretion and they are m the plasma cells are derived from B cells once they are activated and uh, thereafter they can release some immunoglobulins compared like depending on the antigen it may release immunoglobulin G, E or A okay Isotypes, and you should know which is produced initially during the antigen uh, uh, presentation and immune response. Any ideas? Ig, a, less like. So there is a. Uh, you should know that immunoglobulin M is produced initially and only thereafter like uh, several days or one week or ten days it uh, okay so it takes time to activate B cells and plasma cells to produce immunoglobulin G, E and A this is called class switching so it takes time so therefore uh, there is all the immunoglobulin M production during the initial immune response okay so uh, you should differentiate. This is immediate action of uh, like response to antigens. So only immunoglobulin uh, M uh, can be produced, and therefore immunoglobulin M can also activate complement system, which is also involved in humoral immunity and uh, can like induce inflammation and killing of those bacteria or whatever there is so therefore immunoglobulin N is important and uh, these immunoglobulin M molecules are in two forms one is monomer which um, uh, actually uh, on is on B cell this is one of the marker of B cell and once uh, it's secreted in the blood it can be pentamer so there are five immunoglobulin molecules joined with uh, J chain okay and they are circulating in the blood and that's why uh, this is called pentamer and you know if there's a five immunoglobulins together like pentamer it can bind many many types of uh, antigens okay so they can outwardly uh, um, bind to antigen and act before humoral response evolves so before immunoglobulin G or others are secreted okay it takes several days okay so what's going on in the bone marrow what do you think any ideas 
what cells are developed in bone marrow? And initially, teacher to yeah. And others, of course, there are others: leukocytes, monocytes, erythrocytes, thrombocytes. Everything is derived from bone marrow. Okay, so they can, but in terms of leukocytes and lymphocytes, it can produce B cells. It, they are fully mature in the bone marrow and also it can release some also Im immune cells like uh, monocytes, neutrophils and others and once they are released they circulate in the bloodstream So they are asking you anatomic location. We are those. We are the thymuses. Any uh, any idea? Where? I I don't hear. Oh, sternum. Yeah. This is called actually. They are asking you mediastinum specifically. So zero can be uh, three like uh, section in the mediastinum, anterior, posterior, middle. So and also upper and uh, tower down regions. So specifically thymus is antero superior. So this is uh, the closer to the chest and upper side in the mediastinum. And this is important. Uh, because there are some disorders like uh, thymic tumors or thymomas so we need to know specifically where this is located to identify them on uh, x-ray or on CT scan or MRI so that's why we need to know they are this organ is in antero superior in the mediastinum okay okay mm. So interleukin 3, uh, we actually have not discussed this, but uh, I want to tell you that uh, you all know GMC SFES, granulocyte monocyte colon stimulating factor. So this interleukin can also work in uh, and act on bone marrow uh, like in the same way like GMC SF does, and it can promote the uh, proliferation and differentiation of stem cells into the granulocytes and monocytes so along with GMCSF interleukin 3 is important to know okay What is passive immunity? Uh, I have mentioned this in our first lecture, like when you have exposures to some dog bite or anything, uh, you may or may not uh, be become infected by rabies, yes? And this is virus. So sometimes uh, we need to give passive immunoglobulins to those patients to avoid spreading of this infection because if this infection goes and infects the nervous system there is no way to come back and almost always there the result is death of the patient so that's why we need to passively transfuse immunoglobulins, antitoxin immunoglobulins and uh, help avoiding the infection so the temporal onset of these immunoglobulins are much um, I would say fast and uh, short duration and they have rapid onset because they are instantly once they go into circulation their onset is rapid 
but they have short duration okay and uh, other than this example we can have uh, other examples of passive immunity like uh, you can see uh, we have many immunoglobulins against other microbes and viruses like hepatitis B virus also uh, there's a varicella virus diphtheria and botulinum toxin antitoxin um, immunoglobulins so when sometimes we need to transfuse possibly this to avoid dissemination of the infection or when there is a like diphtherial infection have you covered diphtheria no so th this can cause uh, severe infection and may this has very lethal toxin it can cause heart muscle damage and nervous system damage therefore mainly to death so we transfuse antitoxin like anti diphtherial immunoglobulins and this avoids those complications uh, so that's why we need to know this and other than this uh, transfusion uh, the maternal immunoglobulin G which is uh, uh, actually which crosses placenta it's also an example of passive immunity and also during the breastfeeding we know that colostrum which is very concentrated uh, and which is actually first um, during the first suckling uh, process it, it uh, derives also immunoglobulin A and protects babies GI tract and respiratory tract from infections okay and in terms of onset and duration uh, compared to active immunity active has relatively slower onset but it can last maybe several years okay active immunity can be induced by two ways exposure to ex exogenous antigens by itself like we encounter many antigens or by vaccination okay both can induce uh, active immunity any ideas like you, you can tell me even one function actually I can't hear anything there are many cells in lymph nodes like T cells, B cells, macrophages and therefore they are filtrating lymph from bacteria or so whatever antigen is there and also they are catching them presenting uh, like macrophage at its uh, antigen presenting cell it recognizes different antigens present it to T cells and therefore activates other immune responses and also we have uh, B and T cells there of course in uh, lymph nodes and in the paracortical region we have T cells and in the follicular region as you can see here we have primary and secondary follicles so primary is not active but once B cell is activated it can give rise to development of secondary follicles and therefore germinal center and these germinal center are important for immunoglobulin secretion because there are plasma cells which are derived from B cells and they are producing immunoglobulins okay so they are asking you about cells of innate immune system can you tell me several ones Yes, so uh, there are neutrophils, macrophages, uh, monocytes, dendritic cells, and many of like natural killer cells, lymphocytes, but they are part of innate immune system. And also complement 
and even physical epithelial barrier is part of innate immune system because it protects us from the invasion of some bacteria or whatever uh, and you also can see here and in terms of adaptive immunity the difference between it they in adaptive immune system we have B and T cells and immunoglobulin is produced by plasma cells which are derived from B cells um, and in terms of specificity uh, adaptive immunity and immune system is very specific regarding specific antigen and works specifically and innate immune system and innate immune uh, cells work in a non-specific manner and therefore uh, they can attack everything to kill the bacteria or whatever they can attack during cyto can release cytokines defenses can activate complement and therefore kill the bacteria and they have specific recognition uh, receptors like toll like receptors and they are important in terms of recognition of bacterial products and once they uh, recognize those bacterial antigens they can activate um, there's a specific pathway we will study this later but this is called NF kappa B or a nuclear factor kappa B pathway and activation of this pathway will lead to secretion of many many cytokines and those cytokines will play a major role uh, into activation of B and T cells uh, which are part of adaptive immune system okay actually uh, we discussed this uh, so they can lead to activation of nuclear factor kappa B and they can induce uh, uh, many types of immune responses like fever during the inflammation sh sometimes shock and hypotension because they release cytokines and some uh, like histamine and other uh, chemicals are released during this uh, activation and also toll like receptors recognizing specific pumps known as pathogen associated molecular patterns like uh, there may be a lipopolysaccharide derived from only ground negative bacteria or also can be some flagellin or nucleic acids uh, which are recognized by those toll like receptors and here you can see that this mm, here we have endotoxin endotoxin you know is derived from ground negative bacteria and it's composed of lipid component like lipopolysaccharide lipid component and uh, polysaccharide component and this is lipid A which can activate toll like receptor 4 uh, on uh, macrophages also known as CD14 and therefore this activation of macrophage can release different types of cytokines and also nitric oxide which is powerful vasodilator and can lead to hypotension and also other cytokines can lead to fever hypotension and sometimes septic shock this is how bacteria uh, actually cause sepsis and septic shock so uh, we will study these cytokines later but now uh, it's good you have the idea how the immune system works thank you and have a good weekend if you have any questions please let me know and I will share this presentation actually this um, I can upload this today on uh, th uh, my drive which I share to you and you, you can share to others yeah so and I will try to upload like for another sessions on your general drive yeah and you don't have to have many drives